Welcome to the Angus Report, a news program for cattle producers. From American Angus Association headquarters in St. Joseph, Missouri, we bring you the week's top headlines, including some positive numbers for Angus sales. We look at where the presidential candidates stand on ag issues. We discuss an upcoming tool that measures a cow's lifetime productivity. And Paige Wallace brings us highlights from the National Angus Conference and Tour. This is the Angus Report. Hello, I'm Bob Cervera. And I'm Crystal Albers. Our top news this week. The American Angus Association announces another year of growth for the Angus breed. According to the organization, the Angus cattle earned positive sales numbers in fiscal year 2012, which ended September 30th. Angus bull sale averages increased approximately 20% from last year, with bulls averaging $4,536. Angus female sales increased almost 18%, with an average of $3,371. Association records also show the number of registered Angus animals increased more than 6% to 315,000 registered animals in 2012. You know, our members and our customers using our genetics, there's a large area that have uh, struggled with drought. Uh, they've kept Angus as a priority as our registrations are up about 20,000 head. We ended the year with over 315,000 registrations. Uh, Angus bull sales set a record at over $4,500 on record volume. Over 40,000 head sold. Angus female sales were up uh, the, the best that they've been in the last four years at uh, almost $3,400. CAB sold about 810 million pounds of certified Angus beef product. We had a great year financially with our investments and so we had one of the greatest years we've ever had in the history of the Angus breed. Farmers and ranchers are keeping a watchful eye on the presidential election as the Farm Bill collects dust in Congress and ranchers await drought assistance. Presidential debates will continue this week in New York and will likely center on economic recovery and foreign policies. Here however we take a look at where each candidate stands on agricultural issues. According to the American Farm Bureau Federation, energy issues and farm policy are driving forces in candidate agendas. Some responses to a Farm Bureau questionnaire show Governor Romney supports RFS mandates, modernizing complex environmental statutes and regulations, passage of a strong farm bill that provides appropriate risk management tools, he supports immediate drought relief, transitioning oversight of some federally controlled programs to a state controlled system, a labor system that eliminates delays in issuing visas to temporary agricultural workers. A pro-growth tax policy that encourages investment and recognizes that death should not be a taxable event. And multilateral trade agreements that open new markets. President Obama supports RFS mandates and clean energy initiatives, working with producers to bolster growth of the ag economy while protecting the environment passage of a farm bill with a strong farm safety net for producers, a system that would provide legal channels for U.S. employers to hire foreign workers, and tax reform that would return the top tax rate on estates to 45 percent and reinstate the $7 million per couple estate tax exemption. President Obama also notes a record ag trade surplus during his administration and the growth of local and regional food markets. Rural economic growth and supporting rural investments in clean energy and increasing ag funding for research and development are also priorities. Visit fb.org to read each candidate's complete responses. Hunting season began in Wyoming this month, only this time it's for the gray wolf. After being delisted by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in September, Wyoming residents are now allowed to hunt wolves, which pose a predator threat to the state's livestock producers. The number of wolves hunted this fall is limited, and some sources say the season could be short-lived. Appeals to the ruling that allowed the hunts are expected to reach the courts beginning November 1st. A profitable cow herd begins with an efficient female, and an upcoming selection tool from the American Angus Association will measure the length of a cow's productive life and make it easier to identify the Angus cows that will benefit your herd longer term. So at the American Angus Association, we, we've embarked and we're nearly completed with a new EPD, uh, Length of Productive Life, in which we're going to look at a cow's lifetime productivity as a function of uh, when she began product production to when she left production, either uh, as a last calf or, or disposal code date. 
Uh, we do a really good job evaluating all of our weight traits. And we've got several maternal traits, including high for pregnancy, but we don't have a, a measure of, of lifetime productivity or, or longevity yet. And that's what we're trying to get to with this uh, Length of Productive Life EPD. New Maternal Plus program ties in perfectly with this, with this new EPD in that uh, we, the kind of goal with the Maternal Plus program was to, to capture uh, more complete records on actual individual cows. Generation interval in cows is, is long, it's four to six years. So selection, selection made today uh, is going to be around for a while, so we hope that you know, giving a lifetime productivity EPD gives uh, producers a, a chance to, to make genetic progress long term in their herds. Visit Angus.org for more information regarding Maternal Plus or the Lifetime Productivity Tools. The Angus Foundation and Intrust Bank are once again providing Angus breeders with an easy way to support education, youth and research programs. The $75,000 card challenge has been extended until December 31st. For every new activated Angus Platinum Visa booked, Intrust Bank will make a $100 donation to the Angus Foundation. If we can meet that goal of 500 total new accounts, Intrust Bank will be more than happy to provide an additional bonus donation of $25,000. So all we're asking is, you know, switch from whatever card you're using to an Angus Platinum Visa from Intrust Bank. Use it as you would any other credit card, and, and by doing so, you're automatically donating funds to the foundation, again, to, to progress all the important initiatives that they're working on. New card holders must activate their cards with $100 in purchases within 30 days of opening to qualify for a donation from Intrust Bank. Visit Angus.org to continue watching this episode of the Angus Report.